berat. Stay 
try to slip away again I know we spent so much time apart now, lady But pulling you close, it's me and you until the end Take your way back into my black cup, baby I waited too long just to have you slip away again I know we spent so much time apart now, lady But pulling you close, it's me and you until the end You going rafting? Yeah, yeah. This is for, I got this set up for later so we can go catch some trout on the grays. You gonna do like a trolling situation where you're? Yeah, I guess we could. We could do it from shore. <laughs> Hi, what big airbags you have.
Good. How far are you from home? 200 miles. Four minutes, give or take traffic. Like <laughs> give or take the stoplight that you don't have to go through? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, oh no. Who are these guys? Unless there's like a stray Joy dog or something. Productions right here.
Not so much here or here. Not so much here or here. The day got started just like any other day when uh, when our little posse gets uh, gets rolling and it's blue sky. You could really tell that uh, things between Hoff and I were going to start to escalate from the moment that uh, we went up and just sized up this first rock face and, and Rob just had absolutely zero hesitation. Uh, you could just hear it in his voice, he was ready to rock and roll. And so he hits this thing and I mean, you know, he's at his highest point when he's supposed oh to be God. landing. and. Uh, 
luckily, just, you know, just so, so many prayers go out to the guy that uh, he did what he did. You know, he jumped off his sled right at the last minute, and his sled just stabbed the snow. And for him to walk away from it, uh, even with the sled a little bit tweaked, and he was sore, you know, super sore the next day. But, you know, just an incredible athlete to be able to just take that kind of punishment. So then I see him do that, and so I'm freaking out um, and not really wanting to, to hit what he just did by any stretch. And at the same time, um, you know, not wanting to put this bomb hole, you know, 50 feet up from where he had just landed. So I just decided, you know what, the heck with it. I'm not even going to do it today. I'm going to go play it safe and go try some hill climbing. Uh, so I made a couple of poles, and we did some... Uh, you know, I did some filming up through a couple of little shoots and I was feeling pretty good and my, you know, my boondocker turbo Polaris was just, it was on fire that day and I was, I was ready and kind of felt invincible to be able to pull anything in there. It was a spring day and everything felt super fast. So uh, I sized up this, uh, this little shoot where I knew I had to kind of go up into a little, like an hourglass shaped deal where I knew that once I was committed to it, I was, I was in it. There was no, no real way to turn out safely. So sized it up two times and then I just went for it and felt like I was carrying a great amount of speed once I got up in there, but the, uh, the snow conditions just changed on me in a hurry and went up to the right and tried to hook left and you know most times I've been able to just wheelie the sled up and sort of re-entry and come back down and this time the, the snow was too deep in that little pocket and it just caught me and I jumped downhill of it and the sled started to roll and I knew there was no saving the sled at that point. So I released from the sled and the sled didn't release from me. The next thing I, I know I'm getting tossed, you know, over the backside of the track and I'm headed, you know, not facing forward, uh, but you know, getting flung right in front of the snowmobile going backwards. And it's all shady from there on out. Um, I, I, like you guys, just get to see the footage and watch me come down that rock face. and. I gotta tell you, you know, it's a, I guess it's a testament to, to wearing your gear, um, you know, as well as, you know, some of these movies that you watch, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily, like, show people, show the audience of the real dangers that we put ourselves through. And some of it, you know, yeah, obviously you're, you're making your own calculated risks with a lot of these things, and that was a perfect example of that day. Um, but, you know, once again, I got, uh, you know, it was, I, would, I would consider that more of like a, a clothing error that I, I was hung up on the sled. I got hooked right on, the, right on the bar end with my backpack, and that's what sent me down in front of the snowmobile. And I was completely unaware and unprepared for, for what had happened. Um, but thank God for, you know, for the equipment that I wear. Obviously, you're going to wear a helmet. Um, but then just the protective gear, the chest gear that I had on that day. Um, and then, you know, the, whatever the, you know, was in my backpack, I think actually helped me too. If, if you watch the, you know, the back end of the sled really clobber me after I get down from the, from the rocks and I'm completely out. So I've got no way to get away from the sled or anything. And it's, it's just a miracle that I ended up, uh, being, you know, I was hurt and I twisted up my knee a bit and had some, some scratches on my face from just head planting the snow pretty hard. But. You know, you, you look at that accident and you can watch that 10 times over and, you know, it could have gone 10 different ways. I mean, so, and ironically, I go to the hospital and the same doctor that treated me when I hurt my spine years ago in a snowmobile accident, he's just like, ah, you're back. Let me Hello, guess. Dan. Snowmobiling. So, you know, I've, I've kept the lights on in, uh, in the same hospital that I was born in, in Jackson, for quite some time.
Take one, two.
Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs>